my name is Dustin Bager and um, I teach here at Jasper Place High School, which is a large um, urban high school in, in the city of Edmonton. So there's about 23, 2400 students that go here. Uh, that I've been uh, working to really kind of integrate my own passion of uh, permaculture and urban agriculture uh, into the curricular content of, um, of, of, of a high school. Uh, and so we've been working here with clubs, we've been working here with uh, community members, uh, with other teachers, uh, with my own classes to try to create some uh, essentially food for us here at the school. And, and uh, it's a really great opportunity to kind of create these, these projects that uh, tie into so many different uh, subjects. Well, it just looks like a mess right now uh, with a bunch of straw. Uh, we've been sitting on straw. Uh, what, we're, what, we've, uh, what we've done here is uh, the students and I have come up with a design um, to put in a perennial food producing system. Um, the idea is that we're essentially going to be taking portions of this lawn here and uh, rapidly moving it through succession to, uh, to create a, something that resembles a forest. And the idea behind it is, you know, nobody waters a forest, nobody weeds or tills the forest, nobody goes around and squishes the bad bugs, and yet, um, you know, if, if, if you leave for the weekend, your forest doesn't die. Um, it, it, uh, you can have drought for, you know, numerous years before a forest really, uh, you know, would start to die. And, and it's because of all of those connections and relationships in there. And so we're trying to take a lot of those patterns and principles that you'd find in a natural system and adopt them here um, in the implementation of our forest garden. Uh, the exception is uh, between, the difference between it and a, and a regular forest is that we're tweaking a lot of our species to be uh, food producing. And so, um, you know, a lot of our trees are going to be uh, apples and um, and cherries and we'll throw some plums in here. I think we might, because of the uh, microclimate, be able to get away with an apricot. Um, we're going to have a sort of... That's here in Edmonton. I would like to try, you know, there's a, there's an apricot, uh, there's an apricot called a Capilano apricot. Um, I, I believe it was a seedling planted off of Wayne Gretzky Drive and um, there's three of them actually in a row and it, uh, it's pretty hardy for our climate. I think in a nice little microclimate like this, it could probably uh, especially take off. So we'll, we'll find out. So we're, we're definitely trying to push the limits on a, on a few things, but um, you know, on the other th end of, uh, on the other side of things, you know, the Saskatoons, which we know grow well here, the currants and the gooseberries, which we know grow well here, the Jostaberry, which is just a, a uh, combination of those two, a cross between those two. Um, raspberries do really well here. Uh, rhubarbs, um, asparagus, and so we're going to put in all of those those perennial uh, food producers, and and that's going to make up the various layers of the, of this forest that's going to be uh, be put in here. So it, it should be aesthetically pleasing uh, when it's finished, um, and it should uh, be able to harvest the water that it requires um, once it gets established. And at the same time, we should be able to build a little bit of biodiversity. It should be able to sequester some carbon in the soil and build some soil over time. Uh, and become a, uh, a place for students to sort of hang out and enjoy, a place for the community to come and interact, um, a place where we can, you know, we can do a field study, an ecology field study right out in the back here because the garden was built with, with those principles in mind. Um, and then of course, there's the big food piece where we can take that food and we can send it to the commercial kitchen, which is just down here, um, you know, 50 feet from where we're sitting. And uh, it, it, because it is a full-on commercial, licensed commercial kitchen, they have the capacity to, um, to, uh, to actually process uh, 50 rhubarb plants or five apple trees or, or whatever it is and, and, um, and uh, turn that into uh, our lunch program and or um, value-added products that can be sold at, you know, little farmer's markets and stuff that we have here at the school. So really local food. Yeah, really local food. Right. Yeah, it doesn't get any 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 more local than that. Oh.